Good morning. Merry Christmas. And welcome to St. James Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Christian Marquardt, and all of you, both members and guests, very glad you have the opportunity to worship with us here this morning as we celebrate our Savior who was given for us, born in a manger, the Savior of the world for us. And later on in the service, we're going to hear about something um, that we've been talking about throughout this entire season, about Jesus being connected to Jesse's tree and why that's so important for all of us. But this morning, we're going to get started with our opening hymn, which is Hymn 55, O Come, All Ye Faithful. The words will be displayed on the screen. You will also find that near the back of the red hymnal. May God bless our Christmas worship this morning. Amen. We continue with the order of worship that is printed on page one on your service folder. You will also find the words displayed on the screen. Please stand.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers have their hands, let the mountains sing together for the Lord, for the Lord became flesh and made his dwelling among us. The Lord comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. We confess our sins to God and ask for his forgiveness. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do. You should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Jesus Christ, our true God, came to suffer for our sake. Because he suffered in our place, our sins have been taken away. By his command and as a called servant, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May his birth bring you great joy and peace. We join our hearts in prayer. Almighty God, grant that the birth of your only Son in the flesh may set us free from our old bondage under the yoke of sin. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 52. These are, words are, uh, these are words of comfort for a people who have been downtrodden, oppressed, for people whose city has been destroyed, for people who are homeless. But these words of comfort don't tell us that a great and mighty king has come to destroy their enemies. These words come to tell us about a little baby who was born in very humble circumstances, who didn't look like that king at all, but who would grow to become not just a king, but the savior of all mankind. A reading from Isaiah 52, beginning at verse 7. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen lift up their voices. Together they shout for joy. When the Lord returns to Zion, they will see it with their own eyes. Burst into songs together, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. This is the word of our God. Amen. Amen. Our worship continues with our next hymn, hymn 63, Angels We Have Heard on High.
Our second scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 1. The Bible talks about many different angels appearing to people throughout the Bible. It talks about the servant of God coming with a message for a specific servant. And in the Christmas story, we hear about that sort of thing happening kind of a lot. We hear about angels appearing to Mary. We hear about a dream that came to Joseph. We hear about angels appearing in visions and all sorts of things. But one thing is different. And it's not the person that we would expect. The angels look powerful and mighty. They're glorious. They appear to shepherds. They sing. But on Christmas, we don't celebrate great and powerful and glorious. We celebrate small and fragile and humble, the little baby Jesus, born in the manger. And even though you wouldn't know it by looking at him, he's more powerful than all the angels put together because he is the Son of God. He is God himself. A reading from Hebrews 1, verse 1. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have become your father. Or again, I will be his father, and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. In speaking of the angels, he says, He makes his angels winds, his servants flames of fire. But about the son, he says, Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever, and righteousness will be the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. This is the word of our God. Amen. Amen. We continue with the singing of our sermon hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, that's hymn 61.
The reading for our consideration this morning comes from John chapter 1. The reading begins at verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of our God. Amen. Amen. Let's go plant a Christmas tree. And I don't want us to plant a tree. I want us to plant a Christmas tree. So we'll take the seed. I don't, I don't know what kind of seed it grows from, what kind of a cone it grows from, whatever it is. We're going to take it and we're going to plant it. And we're going to water it. And we're going to watch in amazement over the years as the Christmas tree grows. Because as it grows, it's not just a tree, it's a Christmas tree, so it, it grows and it's decorated. And as the branches spread out, there's already ornaments on the ends. And there's, and there's tinsel, there's garland, there's lights, and they, and they light up. It's not even plugged into anything. The tree just grows, and there's a star at the top, not an angel, there's a star at the top. And then the best part is when the tree is fully grown, what we see at the bottom, because there's gifts there. And it's, it's the gifts that you wanted, it's the gifts you didn't get when you opened presents this morning, or when you're going to open presents later, when you opened presents yesterday, or when you opened presents a week ago, or when you open presents a week from now. It's not those presents. It's the ones you really wanted. It's the ones you really needed. It's the good presents. You open the present, it makes you 20 years younger. Health problems, gone. Energy, it's back. You don't have headaches anymore. Your life is the way that it used to be. You open the present. It's your friend you haven't seen in a while. It's your family member who's there, who isn't there right now. You open the present, and it's exactly what you wanted. It's expensive, and you can't afford it, but but it's what you wanted. You get it. You open the present, and it's enough money to pay your rent. That's the kind of tree I want. I want that Christmas tree. Not an artificial tree. Not a tree where you have to arrange the branches because otherwise you can see in between to that little green stick that's in the middle. Not a tree like that. And not even a real tree. Not the kind where you have to go out into a nursery and cut it down and tie it to your car and put it up in your living room? Do any of you still do that? I, I've never done that. I give you credit if you do. Where you have to vacuum up the leaves and you have to water the tree? No, no. It's not gonna be like that. It's gonna be a good Christmas tree. It's gonna grow out of the ground. It's gonna be perfect from the very moment we planted it and it's gonna have all the presents just like we've always wanted. That's not the kind of tree we have, though. That's not the kind of tree we're able to produce or plant or grow. We can't do that. And even the gifts that we're giving to people, I mean, we hope they're what people were asking for or what they wanted or what they really need, but we don't know that for sure. And in some cases, we do know this is the best I can give you, but I know it's not enough. 
These are the gifts that we give. I wish we could have a tree like that. I wish we could have a tree that actually gave good gifts to people. I wish we could have a tree that when people saw its lights, they weren't just for a moment encouraged or warmed, but a tree that they could see the lights and then their lives were actually different. They could actually be changed. They would really genuinely be happy, not just sort of happy for a moment because they saw something interesting or cool, but, but a tree where they saw its light and it could actually guide them. It could make them different on the inside. I wish we had a tree that actually could give food to people. Not just, a, not just like an apple tree where you pick it and you eat the apple and the food's gone. But the sort of tree that could really provide for people. Could provide sustenance. A tree where you could eat it and not be hungry ever again. A tree that was always there. That's the kind of tree I would like to have. But it's not the kind of tree that you and I can make. It's not even a tree we've ever seen before. We've been talking about a different kind of tree over the last several weeks. We've been talking about Jesse's tree. And it's because of something that we find in the book of Isaiah, chapter 11. And if you were here last night for our Christmas Eve service, you would have heard these words being read. This is what it says. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. Talking about a family tree, the family tree of Jesse. And over the past several weeks, we've learned about what that, what that really means, a family tree from Jesse. We learned about the seed that was planted that would grow into this tree. Already back with Adam and Eve, God made a promise. He said, your seed, your offspring, is going to be a blessing for all people. And then we heard about the roots of the tree, about Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob. We heard about this tree because God once again gave a promise to Abraham saying, your offspring is going to be a blessing for all people. And we get to the tree itself, to Jesse, who is just a man who had many sons, but those sons grew up into something special. His son David became the king over all Israel. The tree wasn't just a trunk, but it grew branches, and it provided care and protection for people. David and Solomon were kings over Israel. They took care of people, but that tree still hadn't produced something very important. It hadn't produced the kind of fruit that I was talking about. It was only able to give people shelter and protection for a short while. Because after that, after David and Solomon were kings over all Israel, their family line was cut down. They weren't kings over Israel anymore. Israel wasn't even a nation. It split in half, and then it kept splitting, and people went away into captivity, and they were slaves. And by the time Isaiah writes, he says, this great family tree that had started with the promise of the Savior and then grew up into David and Solomon it's cut down. It's a stump. It's dead. There's no more hope for these people. It's gone. And they know it. Because they saw what the greatest of humanity turned into. But Isaiah says, in chapter 11, A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. From that dead stump, from that dead tree, something is going to grow. And it's going to bear fruit for the first time in the history of this tree, of this people, for the first time in the history of humanity, there's going to be fruit for people to eat. And they're going to get eternal benefit from it. And that takes us to John chapter 1. And John speaks very poetically about what that fruit was, where it came from. He said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, but the Word was God. 
He made all things. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness. For the first time, people had a light that they could look to, a light that wouldn't just go out when the bulb died, when somebody unplugged the cord, when somebody blew on the candle, when one bulb in a giant string of a thousand bulbs was burned out and somehow it, it made all the rest of the bulbs not work? Is this really the best technology we have? It wasn't like that. It was a light that shines. And it's not a light that shines with a bunch of other lights. It's a light that shines in the darkness when there's no other lights around it because there are no other lights that compare to it. There is a light shining. And God's hope was that people would notice this light shining in the darkness, not flickering, not going out, and be interested in it and walk towards it to see what's going on with that light. And Jesus was born on Christmas morning. And there was a light in the sky that guided people to the place where he was. But they weren't so much interested in the star, they were interested in the person the star was pointing to. They said, I want to know what is going on with this baby. And when the shepherds heard about it, They went and they ran and they told everyone. They said, something special has happened. There is life. There is light. We want you all to know about it. And now for a couple thousand years, people have been gathering together to talk about life for the first time. Something that's really alive. Talking about light, not the light from this tree or the light from this building or the lights that you set up outside your house or inside your house or the lights from displays that you're going to drive around and look at. But a light that people can look to and be warmed by and be changed by. The light of hope in a dark world that there is something beyond this year that there's something beyond this life, that there's something beyond pain and absence and hurt and loss, that there's something that goes on beyond that. There's something we can hope for and be happy about and look forward to. That light is Jesus. And as John tells us, in the beginning was Jesus. Jesus was with God. Jesus was God. He was with God in the beginning. And he created all things. And even though he created all things, he was willing to live among his creation. He was willing to leave heaven and be born as a baby in a manger. And being born there, even though he made everything, they didn't, they didn't even know who he was. They didn't recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own didn't receive him. And yet for the people who did, to those who believed in his name, he made them children of God. He shone as a light. He taught people about the kingdom of God. He said, the kingdom of God is near you. It's not far away. It's here right now. I want you to trust in me. Believe in me. See the miracles that I'm doing. See the way that I'm changing people's lives, not just in a physical sense, but what I can do for their souls as well. Jesus lived and died and took away all of your sins. If you're a person who's living in darkness, Jesus died for you. Jesus lived for you. He was born for you. He was the light for people who were in darkness. So if you're in darkness, Jesus is for you. If you can already see and you don't need that light, well, you're wrong. But even if you think you have a light, it doesn't compare to the light of Jesus. Jesus came for you. He came to give you life. Not just what you call life right now, Not that temporary happiness from drinking eggnog or eating cookies or 
opening presents or seeing people you haven't seen in a year because that's going to be gone tomorrow. Jesus came to give you life. He came to give you eternal life. To promise that for as unhappy as you might feel right now, God is near you. God loves you and he cares about you and he wants you to be with him forever. That's why Jesus was born as a little baby. God, the all-powerful God being born, not even in a nice bed, in the kind of place where animals eat, because he cares about you. He was willing to give up everything so that you could be near him. Jesus has lived and died and forgiven all of your sins. He cares about you so much. He's better than any tree we could plant He is the tree. He's the tree that grew up. Out of our failures, out of the the failures and sins of humanity, out of our pride and selfishness, Jesus was born. Off the stump of mankind, he was the branch that grew up and produced shade and fruit and life and light to all of us, where we have failed, Jesus has succeeded. For the first time in human history, it has never happened before or since, people could eat fruit from a tree and be satisfied, knowing that they would never go hungry ever again. When you are close to Jesus, who gave up everything to be close to you, You can see the light. You can understand the warmth of God's love. A little baby leaving heaven for you and me. Amen. Amen. We continue with prayer. On this holy day, dear Father, we rejoice to hear the good news of great joy that a Savior has been born for us. For fulfilling your prophecies, and in the fullness of time, sending your Son to be our Savior, we give you our heartfelt thanks and praise. What a great mystery of our faith this is, that God has become fully human for our salvation. Even though he is the all-powerful Lord of all, he is wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. In the midst of our joy, we grieve for the many people in our world who do not know that Jesus has come to bring them forgiveness and healing. As the shepherds spread abroad the good news of the birth of the Savior born for all the world, may we also make use of the unique opportunities this holiday presents to tell others of what we have seen and heard concerning the child. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions in a moment of silent prayer. As the angels sang out their praise, move us also to sing out our praise to you, today and every day, as the joy of Christmas remains in our hearts. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. On this Christmas morning, we pray the prayer our Savior Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our service concludes with our closing hymn. Once again, Merry Christmas, everyone. Good to have all of you here um, for worship this Christmas morning to celebrate our Savior who was born for us, Jesus Christ. My only announcement is that we've got a, more services coming up. Um, we've got a regular Sunday service this Sunday um, at 9 a.m. at the regular time. Additionally, we have our Christmas Eve service um, coming up whenever that is, on the 31st, like it was last time. Uh, that'll, what, what did I say? Did I say the wrong thing? Huh. Let me try that again. New Year's Eve, coming up on the 31st. 6.30, uh, service with communion. Close out your year um, on the right note with the promise of forgiveness from your God. That's all I got. God's blessings to you and your families. Um, have fun opening presents if you still have them to open. Um, drive safe. Be healthy. All that good stuff. God's blessings.